And welcome to another edition of the Bandit Room. <laughs> Charles, <laughs> we're going cold. <laughs> rusty. This is I'm live rusty. I took a week off, and I, I didn't. Okay. Yeah, you went to the audition. I went to. Did you try out not, for SNL? That's is that not where it went? was? That's not what happened. What? <laughs> it's a legitimate medical excuse for missing last. This is week. how you know it's real. In life. <laughs> <laughs> no, and but uh, last week. Guess. We're just gonna leave it. We're just gonna leave that intro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. One hundred percent. The last week guest, going last cold. week guest was claiming that you were dead. And right. I was <laughs> debating him, saying, "No, you went for an origin." That's true. That's true. I was in the please don't destroy. That's what it was. Oh, yeah. okay. No, All, right. No. All right. Let's get started. All right, we'll get started. We're joined in the studio by Mr. Aggie and Caleb, and our special guest today is Mr. Kyle Mosher. Thanks for joining us. Of course. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. So you are a multimedia artist working in multiple fields right now primarily murals yep uh how'd you get into that um somebody asked me to do a mural and i said no and then they kept bothering me <laughs> for about three months <laughs> and i still said no and then her husband messaged me on instagram it was like can you just my, my wife won't get off my back about this mural <laughs> can you just like just give her a quote like for, for doing the mural and it mm -hmm. was that novel nota which was built which is the apartment complex behind Cabo Fish Taco in Charlotte. Gotcha. And um, I pitched it and then it ended up being like the most rewarding and exhilarating thing that I've ever done in my life, up in my career. And mm -hmm. I never wanted to do murals. I wanted to be a studio artist. I wanted to do print media, uh, web media. Like I wanted to take this signature aesthetic I had and, and apply it to mm -hmm. like things like skateboard, fashion, pop culture. I wanted mm -hmm. to live in that realm, you know? I never, never thought I would do murals. Okay, that's pretty cool. Like, can you, either you being a, I don't, I don't know if you are an artist. <laughs> you, you are a foodie. <laughs> Caleb can be an artist. Either Caleb or you can explain to people who may not understand uh, or know much about it. What is a multimedia artist? Okay, I, I just meant that he works in a variety of disciplines. He's, he's you got uh, murals. You do studio art. You have. Uh, Graphic design, yeah, digital work art. Okay, yeah. yeah. So when I, I, I when I first thought, when I first heard, I thought multimedia, multimedia, like, like video. Yeah, that's what I was like thinking. Oh, yeah. I think I think it's multidisciplinary. Okay, excuse me. That's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Excuse me. That's okay. <laughs> that, no, that's okay. No, I'll I, take a step. I just I just sound, <laughs> right. I was like, well, actually, guys, uh, it's uh, it's multidisciplinary. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that's what a overpriced art degree gets you. That's what you <laughs> so do you have an art degree? I do. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, right on. Yeah. So where'd you study? Where'd you? Where'd Get going. I went to a conservatory in New Hampshire. Um, again, well, that sounds so bougie. I went to a <laughs> conservatory. It was uh, traditional painting, sculpting, drawing. So, um, you know, I would I would do the color theory classes. I would do still lifes. I would draw naked people for six hours a day. I would draw architecture. Uh, I lived in Italy. I, I did classes over there. So a really like traditional curriculum. And the thing about that was like I started as like a graphic design major at a different school mm -hmm. and it felt very surface level um, and we were learning through the computer and I wanted to learn like the meat and potatoes of creation like you know when we got there like the composition classes were like you get like scissors and paper and you're figuring out compositions like you start very um, you start very rudimentary learning composition and you learn and you don't even like we didn't get computers until like my junior year gotcha. maybe my maybe my senior year you know and it was it was like the best thing that ever happened to me because the computer is just a tool mm -hmm. and it's like the person that's behind it is like that's where that's who's controlling it you know so yeah it makes things easier and you can mask and you can do la layers and all that stuff but right so in a, in a college or a place of education like that is everyone who's attending that are they all like same like your background your interest or they were all passion or is it they're all way more talented than me i went i mean everybody <laughs> that's the thing with artists they always claim somebody else is more talented than mm -hmm. them but are they all like the same personality yeah oh good question um i, I never took an art class outside of like the the you know what you have to take in school mm -hmm. so when i i didn't tell my parents i just dropped out of college i was like i don't want to do this anymore like i mm -hmm. you know i, I was i was kind of i had a sports background but i knew i didn't want to do a desk job and I knew that I, I, I did construction I did landscaping I worked retail I did all the jobs like you know in college and through high school I was like I don't want to do any of this you know I had like an entrepreneurial spirit I didn't like a creative spirit and I was like I'm gonna drop out I took a community college drawing class 
okay, I was like, how do I get into an art school? And she's like, you have no background in art. And I was like, no, no. <laughs> and uh, she's like, you need a portfolio. I was like, great. Like, where do I buy one of those? She's like, no, no, no. <laughs> you need a body of work <laughs> to show the art school. Right, right, that. Right. So I was like, all right, cool. I need you to get me caught up in the last 18 years of my life of things <laughs> I missed. So I put together like, you know, drawings of like my hand and plants and right, birds right. and it was I, it was enough to get into art school apparently and I was really raw but I was so eager and hungry right and everyone was sort of like their personality type was they had done art their whole lives mm -hmm. so it was like I knew that I didn't want to be like a statistic I didn't mm -hmm. want to be like here's an art degree now you're working at Starbucks like right, right. I was like I'm gonna do whatever this takes mm -hmm. to get this Gotcha. So this did yeah. this art school after you completed this art school did you make did the school only uh, make you better with the foundation of it or the preparation for it or did you actually your the your way of looking at art actually change from going to school That's such a good question mm. man you, I think you've done this before <laughs> No <laughs> <laughs> I've done this seven times yeah. <laughs> Everything about being in art school was so enlightening and profound because mm. I I found things that I didn't want to do mm. and then I found things that I wanted to do and I was just so raw and, and I didn't know anything that I just tried everything. Gotcha. But by, I would say by my sophomore year, I had discovered like a certain style of art, you know, not to get super boring, called synthetic cubism. It was a movement in the 1900s using paper. Hmm. And I saw that and that's when I was like, that's what I want to do. Like, gotcha. and I knew immediately from seeing it. Yeah, it, profoundly. Because I learned art history. Right. I learned the techniques. I learned color theory. Like I said, I learned all of that stuff. And the thing about being a professional is you have to learn how to be a professional. It's right. like right. it's like there's things that come along with that. Because I don't wake up every day like, I'm, I'm, I want to make art today. It's a, <laughs> it's a job for right. me, you know. Right. But I've learned right. like discipline. And I've learned if I hit a roadblock, I think in my 20s, it would have been like, what what do I need to do to get creative? And now I sort of know what I need to do to, to kind of get out of that. And, and, you know, here's a really good lesson I learned, for example. When you're doing something and you feel like you're in like a creative rut, my teacher was like, here's the secret is go out and make the worst art you could possibly make. Just make it awful. Just do something. And I'm not saying on the side of a building. That's right, a whole different right. thing. But like, <laughs> but like in, in your studio, right? Or in the mock-up phase or whatever. She's like, don't think about making it awesome make it the worst and because it, it at least you're creating mm. and you're you're and then at that point your mindset is like not trying to be perfect it's just right. like i'm gonna just do stupid things and then you're just like whoa it unlocks a whole different way of looking at what you're creating mm. gotcha now chuck close had a line about something like that I don't know, he's out of oh fashion yeah these days but it was something about uh, amateurs wait for inspiration and the rest of us just show up and get to work. Yeah, like, yeah, like it's, mm. it's, exactly. It's that sort of mentality of just getting something out Is there. Is that what you researched this weekend? That's what I researched. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot just sitting think, up there. Didn't Chuck Close just lot. die recently? Yeah, he did die recently. Like yeah. in the last few years? Yeah. 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 Mm. No, the reason I was uh, um, asking that question, uh, you know, for a, or close to 15 years, I was a professional photographer and uh, I, didn't, I didn't go to any college or school or anything like that for it. Just picked it up and just kept, you know, kept going with it. And I've gone to a couple of photography conventions and stuff in Vegas. And then you see like thousands of people who are hanging out there. A lot of them, what they do is they just copy basically what the the popular photographers are doing, mm. yep. right? And mm -hmm. they just, if you go and look at the website, obviously I used to watch that very closely uh, when I was in the business. Uh, it, uh, everyone will have the same color scheme, same poses, same everything. Um, and the moment something doesn't work for them, then they're stuck. They have no clue about what to do. Mm -hmm. So you said there was other students who were more talented or better or whatnot. Um, are they all like very successful artists now? There's not, there's, so I wanna, the first thing you said was really, really important hmm. because I tell people all the time, you do not need a degree to be an artist. And I, I actually, I, and I'm a big proponent of not having to go to art school. I. I find a really good mentor. I was lucky that I went to art school and my mentor was one of my teachers. Mm -hmm. I got really, really lucky. Like she taught me a lot, but here's the thing about being an artist is like, if you don't know who you are as a person, you'll never know who you are as an artist because inherently whatever comes out of you is, is going to be your art. So once you know who you are and like what what you love and you don't love and you can create art you don't need mm -hmm. talent and you don't need technique to create you just need the ability to like you know your hand your heart and your mind all have to be connected to mm -hmm. create and that's a really really good point because it's it's very similar to my world it's like 
you know, when I, when I came, when I graduated, flat color stuff was so big mm. and I was doing like texture and a lot of paper and I was going against the grain, no pun intended. And it, it took a long time for my paper stuff to be like even pe to free people even to get it. I remember people in school were like, stop using paper. It's, <laughs> it's stupid. And I was like, this is what I love mm. and I believe in it. And then eventually when it, when it popped off, it was like, there was only a handful of us doing paper. Mm. So that was like an incredibly fulfilling moment in my life. And now I'm painting four murals next to Sheffer Ferry. So it's like, it's all kind of came together. Right. And it's, right. it's really weird, but it's, it's again, now to answer the final question is why that's important is because there's probably three people in my graduating class that are making art full time. Mm -hmm. And I remember when going there and being so out of place and not fitting in, everyone's attitude was like, yeah, man, we'll just get high and it'll just art will come to us. And I was like, <laughs> I'm going to go, I'm going to chase it. Right. Like I want to create and I would read books and it was so uncool to, to want, to want it. Like it was right. so, it, the, the cool thing to do in art school was to just not, care hmm. and i was like i do care i love this I'm, hmm. I'm you know so and the thing is is they're they're again they were all most of them were way more talented than me so my, i majored in communications yeah uh like digital media and but i minored in art it's like six or eight classes it's not like that much but one of the reasons why i didn't major in art is i was like i'm not going to make money doing that like uh, i'm going to end up working at starbucks for which is fine there's nothing wrong with that of but course, you know yeah um so well, that was one of the things I wanted to ask you was like, it's a big question, but what sort of lessons do you have or have you learned about sort of making the business of art work? Yeah. Because uh, clearly you're successful at it. Um, you've made it work. Are there like tips, tricks, things that you can you can talk about that way? Of course, yeah. I can provide, like, provide uh, a blueprint, right? And then it's like everyone has to go figure out right. what works best for them. But when I first started, I tried everything. I tried every site, you know, but... I was you know, reading every book that I could get my hands on. And I wasn't just reading books on like art. I was reading books on like, you know, uh, entrepreneurs and, and mm -hmm. I was studying people that were successful. And I found like just certain things that they were doing that kind of trends that, that were fluid in, a, in any industry. Um, but the biggest thing was I tried everything. I was like, there is, there are no rules. Like the, it's the wild west in art, right? So I tried everything. I found out about licensing. That was the big thing like that I learned early. So I started licensing my art to um, my, one of my biggest mentors told me, you're not a real artist until you get your first 1000 no's. Like, no, mm -hmm. get out of here. <laughs> so I was like, I'm just gonna get all of those out of the way. <laughs> so one summer I bought a book, it's called the artist and designers market. And it's, um, it's like um, the, it's like, you know, the holy grail for artists because it has like all of these amazing things in it. But at the end of the book, it has contacts for like magazines, editorials, agencies, galleries, reps, like, and there's all of these contacts and it's like their name, email, phone number, where, yeah. they, where they reside, like a mailing address and then what they're looking for. So you can like, you know, if you have a certain style or the way of technique. So I went through and highlighted every single one that applied to me and I just, I spent the entire summer applying to these things and I got nice. three answers. I got three emails back out of the 500 that I applied to <laughs> and only one of them was a yes, mm -hmm. but it only takes one. Yes. Right. And that was my first licensing deal. And then from there I licensed my art to uh, a company that sold it like retail. Hmm. So I'd get quarterly royalty checks, which was like a part-time job. It was mailbox. Money. Right. 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 <laughs> mailbox money, you know? Hmm. And so what I'm hearing so far is sort of just like grinding and hustling until you make it work. Yeah. Sort of, I mean, yeah, like... Absolutely. See, and that, that's the thing. Sorry, going back to what you were saying, there's three students out of his graduating class actually in, is an artist because what people forget, it's not just about getting the degree. <laughs> it's it's the hustle that comes yeah. after that and the sacrifice that comes after that. A lot of people get scared away from the sacrifice, not even the hustle. Mm -hmm. It's the sacrifice. What if, oh my God, I can't do something or work this Sunday because I got to watch the football game or I got to go hang out with my friends. They don't want to do that, but at the same time, they expect to happen for them. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. But before I forget, because I am getting old, I might forget some thoughts in my head. And a young man, Caleb, jumped in there. But here's a question. Looking at his history about great artists, there's always some kind of BS <laughs> hookups going on with the master and the student. So since you had a teacher, yeah. does like that happen in your college? 
Ooh, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yo, okay. I want to talk about this. I, so short answer, no, not with me. But I want to talk about this off air. I do. I really do. I really do because okay. I got a story. Oh, man. Can you change the names to protect the <laughs> No, innocent? because she knows she's my mentor. Listen, Lynn, I love you. I, you are... You, uh, she, we're not on speaking terms. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. She's she's one of my biggest mentors. I love her to death. Um, I've learned so much to her. I haven't talked to her in I can't. I don't even know how long. But she was the one who guided me. She was only at her school for two years. She was the first female that was the head of Pratt in New York City. So she's a big deal, like mm. big art school. Pratt. She came to our school. She was the head of the illustration department there, and. Um, she had a sports background, just like me, and she quit and became an artist. So she knew the hustle. She was she bought two houses with her art. She bought one in uh, in France and then one in New Hampshire. So she was really successful, and I spent a lot of time with her for sure. And we were very close. And everyone at the school hated her. She mm-hmm. was because our school was traditional, and mm-hmm. she was just this New Yorker woman who just didn't have any patience for anyone. And like, and mm-hmm. she was a, a woman in a male dominated world. So mm-hmm. she was just like thick skinned. And I really, really loved her attitude and everything she taught me. And, you know, I think she liked like three people in the school and I was one of them. Mm-hmm. So this is where it gets weird. I felt like maybe she thought there was something <laughs> there. I don't know. I All don't. Right. Okay. So this is what happened. Something happened where there was a breakdown in communi- communication between her and I. And then that night her car got egged <laughs> and I was at work. I had an alibi. I was at work, but I think she was really, I think she was like heartbroken because oh. she maybe thought it was me, oh. which it wasn't. And we haven't talked since. Oh no, really? That was oh. 15, wow. 15 plus years ago. Uh. So in a nutshell, no, but it wasn't, you. but it is a very, like there is, that right. does exist for sure. The muse, like the muse, yeah, the yeah, artist yeah, the muse, yeah, that's yeah, a big right. thing, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's move it back to, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you referenced the shepherd fairy mural yeah. and then your work you're going on in Rock Hill right now. So uh, you talked a little bit about that. Uh, how many murals you're working on right now? You have several, right, at this apartment complex yeah, downtown four, Rock Hill? Four, four total. Okay. Are they all outdoors or some inside? All outdoors. All outdoors. And then there's three typography. Like, there's okay. going to be... So, what's cool in Rock Hill and all of these really beautiful old cities that are keeping their history is you have ghost murals. Mm. You guys know what those are? So, is that when you uncover yeah. something? When you're no, working? like the old... If you go through some old town, there's like a huge Coca-Cola exactly. mural. Exactly. You don't know who the hell thing, did right. that. Is that exactly. correct? Exactly. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it just looks vintage and faded. So, the type on this building, the name of the building is Exchange. So, we're going to do three... There's three locations on the building that's going to have the name Exchange, but it'll be a ghost mural. But yeah, so seven like pieces of art total. Nice. So, let, wow. would you mind, if you don't mind, let's walk us through a process of uh, like a city getting you to do the mural so they reach out to you or somebody from their people reach out to you or is it a bidding process for something as big as an apartment it's so it could be both for for this the city a city has never reached out to me it's always the ownership group Mm. so this ownership group i know because i've done work with them before they also own old town kitchen Mm -hmm. and they also own goodyear house in charlotte uh, and I have a huge painting in there um, that I did, like in, in my the water tower, yeah, right? yeah, yeah in yeah. my okay. cut paper style, yeah. <laughs> so um, I have a relationship with them, um, but typical process now is we don't do any. Um, I, I say we, but it's me, my business manager, and then my CPA and my assistant. So it's like a four-person team. We don't do any external marketing. It's just now we have so many relationships with people, and so very. I'm very fortunate right now where. A lot of the stuff just kind of flows in. You know, we, at one point, we were booked like six or eight months in advance. Yeah. So that goes into the next part of it. So when uh, the city or the ownership group reaches out, um, is there, you dictate a price of what your uh, work is worth or do they say, this is our budget and what can you do? Uh, a little bit. I mean, it could be either. Sometimes okay. they come straight out with a budget and uh-huh. then we do the beautiful dance, which is business. <laughs> but that's why I have a business manager now, mm-hmm. which is great. I don't need to do it anymore. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I did it. I learned it. I, mean, I learned I learned painful lesson after painful lesson. Before I had a business manager, it was me. You know, it was me just <laughs> losing money, <Right. laughs> bleeding money. And, you know, I'd, I'd get a commission. I got a commission one time and uh, and it was amazing. It was a huge piece of art. And then I didn't know, like, I didn't ask where it was going. So I did this huge piece and I did the price and I found out it was going to Hawaii. And it was like, 
all, I lost money oh, and I no. spent like a month yeah. making it and it was yeah. like the shipping to Hawaii is insane especially this huge pay <laughs> oh, so lesson learned right. I ask where it's going right like, so painful lesson after painful lesson of you know and that's just stuff of like do you quit or keep going you know and that's just again when you don't have a plan b you just kind of got to figure it out you know it's a. Uh, it's it's the dance of business sometimes right. yeah they have a budget sometimes they don't so if someone comes in and hard negotiates with you and you feel like they want to take their job because they they want that money does the creativity at that point comes down saying you know they're not paying me what i'm worth but i'm still doing this this art for them so i'm not going to be as creative never for me okay because it, at the end of the day well especially now but at the end of the day it's got my logo my branding and everything on right. it but even mm -hmm. even in the beginning because it was a different perspective it was like you know the saying is uh if you want to be paid for more than you do do more than you're paid right mm -hmm. so that was the early mentality of um there are times where i maybe like cut small corners on stuff i've only had really like i've had some bad clients but i had one mm -hmm. horrendous client <laughs> and we had to pull the deal. We had to, we had to do a kill fee because mm -hmm. I gave so much to it because it meant so much to me. It was a really special organization, but I was like, I got to walk away from this. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, that's another big part in business as well as knowing when to walk away from right. something when it, yeah. you know, just not, if it's not worth your time, it's not worth we your time. We just talked about that in one of the previous episodes. Right, like right. It's a big like deal that I just walked away because it's just yeah. not good for us. Right. So uh, the reason I switched from being a full-time photographer to starting a company um, in a totally different industry was to because one of the thoughts that came to me is like, how long I'm going to be doing? If I'm not doing it, I'm not getting paid. So for you, um, what is that plan? How long can you be actually doing what you do and still get paid? Or if you're not able to do it, what's your, I wouldn't say a backup plan, what's a retirement plan? God, you're, you're on the ball today. This <laughs> is because I'm thinking about this right now. So the thing about what we're doing right now is how do we scale it? Cause it's like they're bang for my hand and that's really, I learned a lot by watching Shep cause he's got like a team, right? Mm -hmm. And he's got a, like, he also has a whole different process. That's so fast. Like right. they got it down. My, my process is all hand painted and right. it's like, it's very difficult to sort of scale to his level. There's yeah. no way I could scale it that big. Like we can scale it as in like, I could teach the process to somebody and they're still going to, it's still going to look like what I do. Right. But it's, it's like, like overall design. But. Yeah. It'll be everything I create. Cause I create the right. mock and then I just teach people how to execute. So it's like, if we scaled it and we had a team, like my moral dilemma is like, I didn't paint it, but I created it. <laughs> it's my vision. Someone else is because Michelangelo did that. He had a team of sure. people that I mean, it's a long history. Yeah. A little, a long history of that. Rubens, so that's how I just, yeah, Michelangelo. exactly. Yeah. Rubens. So to expand on that, this was my thought process. I was getting, I was about to turn 40. It was early when I was just, I had just turned 39. I said, okay, so I, before I turn 40, I want to figure out, a, figure out to do something that I can put my next 10 years into it. And then after that, if I don't want to work, whatnot, I'm, I'm set. So most of the photographers who were doing really well at that point, they started uh, adding more income stream, which is to sell books or teach online or, you know, sell a box. But if you stand on this box and take a picture, it's going to be a better picture and BS like that. <laughs> I don't want to do that. The reason for that is if I wanted to add more assistant photographers and teach them what I do, the question I always come to is if they're really good, they should be going on their own and doing okay. it. Okay, yeah. So if they're not good, I cannot be 100% at peace that they're going to execute the plan because <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be present there all the time you know, watching them. Yeah. So that was my, my situation. So I decided, well, it was time to move away from that and then go start something else. So that was my thought process. I'm in a really unique place right now where I love what I do. I'm incredibly grateful that I get to do this, but um, I'm sort of, I haven't really talked about it out loud too much, but I've been putting in a lot of back end work of searching what comes next. Like mm -hmm. there's a, the spark that I have in my heart um, to create stuff is still there. The spark that I have to be like entrepreneurial is still there the spark that i have like the love i have for things like pop culture and fashion and music is all still there but how, like i guess what i'm struggling with with the murals is like again super grateful but i've sort of deviated from what i was my initial calling which was like the paper-based stuff the canvas studio stuff and mm -hmm. like tying it into stuff that's pop culture based mm -hmm. and it's like so all of this stuff is sort of floating in my brain of like what what's next you know sure. like you know, do I start a new business that's related with art? Like I've been in this industry now for 
12 years. I know a lot of ins and outs. I think a representation company to represent artists is a big, the next big thing. You, I'm like, this is a space that needs to get filled because agents are that like actors and athletes, they all have people that represent them. Artists, artists have the same uh, ability to influence culture. Uh, we're visual influence. I hate that word. I hate influencer. It's, it's, it's but for the sake of conversation, we have the ability to influence culture in a, in a different way. We, we, it's not, not with athletic abilities, right? It's not with acting, but you know, there's, there's this new realm of art and now there's a there's a space for us to go and do things and you look at artists like shepherd fairy you know who is travels the world has a, over a million followers right i'm sure he has an agent right and it's like he does collaborations with with alcohol brands with watch companies like he's just as influent influential <laughs> influential yeah. he's just as influential as as any athlete right mm-hmm. so the space is there. Like I would, I think the next thing that interests me is a space to represent these artists and sort of give my knowledge back. Sounds so, um, do you get to travel often to create art, whatever, or like do you get commissioned to go somewhere else, or where was the like furthest you've been to um, to paint a mural? So you're not from Charlotte originally. I'm from Canada originally. So yeah. So talk about what brought you here, and uh, yeah, and where where have you? I went to a really um, crazy exotic place recently to do a mural. Um, Raleigh, Raleigh Durham. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no. So I've have done I've done a few in Raleigh Durham, <laughs> and then we had we had some gigs in Atlanta that we were working on. Like we had a Rick Ross was opening a club. <laughs> he actually was in my like he slid into my DMs like a year ago asking me to sell him some art for his new mansion that he oh, had. Oh wow. like, Did he come through? No, of course oh, not. No. Uh, I don't know. It was a long story. I, I was like, yo, should we do like cuz I didn't <laughs> know how to handle it. I was like I was like, yo, should we do a contract or something? And he was like, man, keep business simple with me. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, so just send me the money, I guess, and I'll send you the art. And then, and then he just never sent me the money. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, I would love to travel. I mean, I, it's hard to it's hard to travel. I have a van that has the capabilities, a work uh-huh, van to uh-huh. to travel. So like, if the thing is, is like, if someone hires me for a mural in Colorado and I go out there, it's like they got to also pay for accommodations, right? And then there also has to be consideration for weather the biggest unknown or the biggest variable because mm-hmm. if I quote them for a three week project and it ends up being five weeks it's mm-hmm. like there's that sort of sticky situation and right. there's plenty of muralists who are able to travel the world and do what they do and it's a matter I guess studying the business model right mm-hmm. going back to so this van that you have is this the kind of van kids are thought not to come close to <laughs> oh, oh my it's god totally you, <laughs> you, you are so on the ball with your questions it's, <laughs> it's wild <laughs> It's so wild how on the ball you are with your questions. Yeah, it's a white van. It's, it's a, van. It's a no, sketch it van. It's a, but it's a Ford Transit Connect, so it's got it's rounded, so it's not like a get in my can, get, come get some candy in my van. I got some popsicles. If you're a trucker and you own a truck that weighs fifty five thousand pounds or more. We're here to let you know that it's time to file your Form 2290 again. Thankfully, Express Truck Tax is here to make e-filing easy with a free VIN checker, a scan for common errors, and 100% U.S.-based customer support. So go to expresstrucktax.com now to file your 2022-23 Form It's time for Ellsworth Kelly or Just a Shape, a game where we look at photos and try to tell if they're works of art by famous artists or just random things. What's that? Oh yes, we know you can't see the photos and this isn't the best game for an audio podcast and we're sorry. If you'll just please hold your angry comments, we will all get through this together. And like, my is, is this you paid? Is this what you paid for in college loans? <laughs> <laughs> what to be? <laughs> so go ahead, man. And off off air, uh-huh. I want to I want to say I think anything can be art. So right. we talked about it off air, but mm. I'm going to tr- see how I do with this. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the, the point of this is not to be like some art is stupid or whatever. It's sure. just like, it's just a fun, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, can you tell if something's a, a real piece of art or not? Yeah. So okay. They will be linked in the podcast and the notes too. Oh, okay. Yeah. First image is a yellow square with rounded edges. Real so, or fake? So is this a real art piece of art? Like yes. that would be- By an actual artist. Yeah. By yeah. an actual artist. Yeah. The thing is, is like, 
anything that you put up there, I'm going to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Is this worth a million dollars? Uh, well, okay, just, <laughs> just looking at the psychology of Caleb, I think he would not have put the... A real art as the first slide. <laughs> oh, probably okay. put a fake wow. All right, right. Right. So this is like a poker game now. Wow. So, uh, Caleb, go ahead. So maybe maybe a better way to think about this is this something that's by the actual artist or is this something that I made to copy them and like right. fake you out? Gotcha. It's, like, it's maybe a better way. To okay, think. yeah, no, that's fair. If, if this was a real artist, it would be like a Damien Hurst. What is it? Is this it? one's real? Holy crap! <laughs> this is Ellsworth Kelly. This is this is by oh, actual. God, here we go. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> All, All right. right. All right, Excellent. next one up. That looks like Trump's signature. This, is <laughs> this looks like Cy Twombly. Art, art, that looks uh, like ooh, how his brain works. Right. <laughs> I think I think this is real. This looks like a Cy Twombly. You case. referenced Twombly earlier. Yeah, you did. That's you did reference. What do you think, Aggie? Uh, I, I, I have no idea, dude. Real no, fake. Real I wish fake. We had you like, got a 50-50 shot. I, wish we had I think it's fake. You think it's fake? And you think it's real? Yeah. This it's fake. fake. Boom. <laughs> this is by Caleb. <laughs> I did this on my iPad. Did you write fake Saquon? Yeah. yeah. I did so this on my iPad yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I nailed the artist. You did. Yeah, 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 yeah. You totally did. Exactly. Uh, when you yeah. brought it up earlier, I was like, crap, he's going to know this one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know his complete. This this is 100% got to be real. Okay. Or no, this looks like your office. <laughs> <laughs> is this what this looked like before it was built? <laughs> this could be real. Oh my. See, this is, this game is like, I would, I would think all of this stuff is real because I think everything's art. That's fake. You think it's fake? That this one, is real. That's real what? One. That's this is um, Ai Weiwei's Sunflower Seeds. Oh, yeah. Seeds. Ai Weiwei is amazing. You know, the production right. series. Yeah, of Let's course. Let's see what's uh, next. What's next? Okay. Isn't that's Trump's bathroom. Bathroom, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that Trump's bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that on Air this Force One? <laughs> this is a golden so toilet. Is it art or is it not? Is it? Um, it well, I don't think... I think it's a real thing because, again, I'm looking at the picture. The floor seems to be used. People are puked there. <laughs> People have pissed on the floor so there. So I'd say no. <laughs> I would say it's not art. Yes. It's fake. Can this be art? Oh, this <laughs> is real. God. This is Maurizio Catalan. So this is the same guy who did the banana on the wall. Oh, it's amazing. He did yeah. this guy. He so this is, this is a golden toilet golden called toilet. America. It's in the Guggenheim. <sighs> it's amazing. Actually, So I think what is the art here? I'm confused. It's a golden toilet. It's a statement. It's, well, it's okay. literally it's a, a statement, golden yeah. toilet. It's a solid and gold it, toilet. It's called America. It's so that t and you can use this. This is a public restroom. <laughs> That's incredible. It's brilliant. So you can go walk in there and use it. <laughs> so how is that an art then? Okay. It, the guy who made ahead. the toilet in our office bathroom <laughs> can be used too. So is that an so, art? So wait. So wait. Here's the thing. It's all about. So that's a really good question. So it's about it's about context. And then it's about sort of like this artist statement to back it up. And it's all con in contextual, right? So to me, yeah. I think stuff like this is so brilliant. I love it. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's funny, though, you mentioned Trump because right. there was actually a thing with this piece where uh, I think Donald Trump had requested some kind of piece of art from the Guggenheim for the White House. Mm. And the Guggenheim replied, you can't have that, but we will give you this. Yes. <laughs> we will give you All right. So this, this is sort is, of, yeah, you go ahead. You, you uh, what is this? Uh, wavy lines, wavy orange lines. I don't know. The, line, the lines to me give it away. Like, I think, I think it's real. Uh, I think it's fake. <laughs> Let's see what it is. It's fake. Oh, God. Did you make this, Caleb? <laughs> yeah. Uh, God, it looks so Caleb, good. do this together. Dude, you yeah, did? This is, this is After Effects. I just like oh, that's what I stuff started. on yeah. there. Yeah. And yeah. There's <laughs> a lot of repetitive <laughs> lines with the exact width and thickness and everything. That's yeah. why I said it's gotcha. fake. What, I mean, those are the most gullible artists. All are. right. What is this? This is some kind of oh, video yeah. game Isn't scene. Isn't this? I don't know the guy, but I, I, I think, think it's I'm real. doing a lot of these to intentionally mess with, with you and right. see if you don't. So. Um, this is like a 3D. It's got a robot with a monkey riding on top, basically. Yeah. Sort of an apocalyptic scene. With I feel like I, you know, I feel like, again, I've I've seen this, but um, I'm, I'm just going to go real. Everything I'm saying from here on out is real. <laughs> it's all real to me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is very inspired by Beeple, though. Uh, uh, this is the guy you think uh, I intentionally, yeah, yeah. this is yeah. what I'm saying. Like, I intentionally picked this one out because it looked like Beeple. Yeah. So what, what do you mean by it's fake? Like, what, what about that is fake? You okay, so I made this. Millions. <laughs> right, but that is an art, though. So why is it fake? Because I made it. But it's so not the idea. Is, it's not the original artist that he's referencing, I guess. Like, yeah, I guess. I mean, with this know. image, where did you get the image? It was, uh, just it was like, like a just stock like a image. Video yeah. game? Okay. Stock okay. image. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, so you, you didn't draw the whole thing. No, no, no. It's a stock image that yeah. I took okay. off the internet. Okay, then I put the monkey head on it, and that's it. No, I give, I give that. I take it. Then it's fake. Yes. I thought you created the whole thing. No, 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 no. Okay. I wish I made the whole thing. Oh God! <laughs> There's only a couple more. Yeah, we're almost there. Oh, almost God. Another block of color, blue and red. Uh, Looks shockingly all, similar. Real. To I'm, the real, I'm team real here on out. It's all real to me. I is love it, it. An Ells <laughs> Ells Ellsworth Kelly again, or is it something? I'll else? say real, real. 
Oh. <laughs> I literally made this one inside of PowerPoint. So. <laughs> it's beautiful, uh, man. Dude, let's, let's print that and hang it. <laughs> let's hang it up. You should hang it right there. <laughs> That's right. the thing is like, I just like that stuff. I think, yeah, it, I mean, yeah. I think the commentary think of art is art. Like, I think the raising the commentary and doing ridiculous stuff is art. A hundred percent. I will die on that hill. And <laughs> I, I said it before we got on the air. Like, yeah. I love the banana tips of the wall. Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing, like, I can make all these copies of things, right. but I wouldn't have been able to come up with any of the concepts that's ahead of time. So like, that, I'm just copying. That's all I'm doing. But, but real quick, but, let me jump in. That's but, where that's where the magic, when people said I could do that, I said, it's not about whether or not you can do it. It's about they, in the context of time and the history of art and where it all fell into place, they did it before anyone else. Right. Yeah. right. So, and that's when people will talk about Jackson Pollock, mm -hmm. right? It's like, yep. oh, I can splatter wall all on the wall. It's not, a, he did it before anyone else did it. So right now, think of 2022. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do that's going to be the thing that everyone talks about in 100, 200 years, right? right. And they'll just be like, oh, uh, uh, right? Uh, that wasn't right. art. I could do it. Yeah. Yeah. So this. Uh, this is the next one. This is a I think uh, it's black real. box with uh, some real. coloring in the circle. I don't know about the gradient. Yeah, yeah. Right. this yeah. one's real. This is a light installation by James. These Turrell. ones I think are really cool, James Turrell. Yeah. I think uh, uh, I think he, I watched a Netflix thing that he was in. Yeah, he's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. He does all these skyscapes and. Oh yeah, like I that. knew exactly yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah, so I did watch the next. I watched a Netflix talk about this guy. Is this um? Is this Anna? What's this? Jay Z's girl that he's upset? Not the woman, the old woman. No. no, this is this is a photograph of like somebody's house. <laughs> <Fake>. <laughs> <laughs> Some windows with some like Fake. candy and stuff on the Fake. floor. That's a what do you think? It's a carpet. Someone forgot to clean the house, man. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Get me out of here. This is Felix <laughs> Gonzalez Torres. Uh, I think there's like one or two more. That's on. like the TV show Holders. That's what it looks like. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, okay, I mean, it's this, all guy, this guy is a very intentional artist. He does a lot. This picture doesn't really do much. That's why I picked just, it. was yeah, intentionally because it looked like it was. <laughs> so, what is, what is it on the floor? It's what, candy, what it? right? It's oh. like candy. Yeah, it's all silver. So, he does uh, piles of candy in museums oh, for a amazing. variety of different things. Love it. Um, <laughs> this looks like a fake, uh, this is a fake uh, Rauschenberg or this is a fake, no, this is a fake Jasper Johns. <laughs> You're correct. Good yes. call. That was, Let's go I gave you at least answer. one easy one. I knew this one was going to be pretty easy. Yeah. So. Uh, hey. So what does the real one look like? This is a Damien Hurst. I'll show you. This is Damien Hurst. It looks like that. Well, it like could be, okay, better. here's the thing is you can easily recreate this, but if it's real, it's Damien Hurst. If it's fake, it's Caleb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. What do you think? I, I have no, yeah, fake. Yeah. This one's real. Oh, no, it's this real. Is, this, this is Damien. You were, you were dead on. Two for two. It's the boy. Uh, so the real Jasper Johns one, Jasper Johns it's an American Ico flag. It's super iconic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it looks like this. So, oh, you yeah, can yeah, see, you can see yeah. the hand painted. Yeah, 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 there's yeah. a lot strokes of strokes and yeah. stuff. Yeah. It's, it's very it's, much different. But it, yeah, if, you, if, you don't, if you're loosely familiar, like right. you can definitely get tripped up. Awesome. Well, thanks. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you. That was a lot of fun. Thanks for joining us. Awesome. I just wanted to wrap up here with... If they do follow you, look look for you, KyleMosher.com, right? KyleMosher.com yep. is the website, yep. And then Instagram, you're just at, at KyleMosher. The, right? the KyleMosher, so T-H-E-K-Y-L-E. -E. Looks like uh, Mosher, pronounced Mosher, M-O-S-H-E-R. Okay. Thank you, guys. The Bandit Room is a production of Span Enterprises, located in sunny Rock Hill, South Carolina. We've been developing, supporting, and growing successful IRS e-filing and business management solutions since 2010. Go to SpanEnterprises.com now to learn more. The views and opinions expressed in the Bandit Room are those of the guests and do not necessarily reflect or state the opinions of Span Enterprises. No information should be considered as tax, legal, or other professional advice.